well, well, well. Did I call it or what? I've been saying all along that Tyson Fury against Alexander Usyk would not happen. And guess what? It's been cancelled because Fury's cut himself in sparring two weeks out from the fight. Now, when this was announced back in October, I said I was very dubious about whether the fight would actually happen. I thought Fury would probably pull out at some stage. And surprise, surprise, he has. Okay, I've seen the photograph online. It does look like a particularly nasty cut. So obviously, if it is that horrendous, you can't fight like that. I totally get it. But isn't it odd how I've been saying all along I would not believe I did not believe this fight would happen until they were actually stepping in the ring. And only then would I believe it was happening. And lo and behold, and I've been saying this all along, this fight won't happen. Fury will find a way out of it. Something's gonna happen that's gonna stop the fight happening. And after my because I work night shifts. I was asleep yesterday afternoon and I was awoken at half past six. My phone was lit up. I had a look and I had about 15 messages from different people on Instagram and friends and family. The fight's off, the fight's off, Fury's been cut, the fight's off. Oh, what, what? I was half asleep. So I'll have a look. Yep, bugger me, it's true. Tyson Fury's sustained a cut in sparring and I've seen the grainy the grainy footage that was uh, looked like it was filmed in 1997 um, it's pretty inconclusive to me um, it looks a bit I don't know it's very grainy and very I don't know very dark and whatnot obviously I've seen the picture picture of the cut is it, it seems to be in the same place as the uh, cut he su suffered against Otto Wallin back in 2019. Now I'm not implying that it is in fact the same picture. Um, I've seen lots of people online on YouTube various things kind of implying that the cut is either a doctored picture. I've even seen people accusing Fury of cutting himself. I've seen people accusing Fury of getting someone to cut him, to elbow him. I've, I've heard that accusation thrown around, that it was a sparring partner that elbowed him, quite why you would elbow someone who was employing you to be sparring partner, I don't know. That has about as much merit to um, as uh, Clar Clarissa Shields claiming that a male sparring partner took the padding out of his gloves. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But ultimately what this boils down to is it's this is Tyson Fury, another pattern of Tyson Fury. Now, regardless of whether this is a genuine injury, it looks like a nasty fucking cut. So, you know, take that out of it. It's another example of Tyson Fury pulling out of a big fight. I've said all along, he doesn't want this fight. Not because he's scared. I don't think he's scared of Alexander Usyk. He doesn't want what would be considered a difficult fight. Alexander Usyk has better footwork than Tyson Fury, he's got faster hands than Tyson Fury, and he's a southpaw. Fury's got the reach, the weight, the size, you know, all that kind of stuff. And he's an actual heavyweight, he's been a heavyweight for longer, obviously, his entire career. But he doesn't want fights where he has to work. I've said this, I've said this, I'm not the only one who's saying it. If you don't agree with me, that's fine. Go piss up a rope, I don't care. You don't have to disagree with me. Everyone's entitled to an opinion. But he doesn't want... I mean, he's proved it. Okay, Vladimir Klitschko, he beat Klitschko years ago. A long time ago now. In a boring, shitty, stinky fight to watch. I've never watched it again since because it was so fucking sleep-inducing. But he, uh, he won the fight, made a bit of history... He ended Vladimir Klitschko's uh, nine and a half year long title reign, but then pussied out of the rematch, um, got popped for PEDs. This is something that everybody else, everyone has a go at Conor Ben. 
about um, drug failing drug tests. Tyson Fury and his cousin failed them. Yeah, and you can believe that bullshit story about uncastrated, un uncastrated wild boar meat all you want. It, it doesn't float with me. But that's just me. You want to believe it? You carry on. I personally don't. And he sat on his ass for, what, three years? Did nothing. Uh, got fat. Um, did a load of cocaine. Drank too much booze. Cried mental health. Not forget that one. Because I think that's a smokescreen. Uh, this mental health business. I think he uses an ex as an excuse. To, as an excuse. Easy for me to say. I think he uses an excuse to act like a cunt to everybody. Um, I really do. Um, I think he uses an excuse for his bad behaviour when he's upset people and done stupid things and said stupid things. Um, and I, I don't. But I'm not saying he's never suffered with depression. I've suffered with depression. Many of you have. Lots of people do. But we don't all act like cunts to everybody. We don't lie and connive and money grab and be just a just an abhorrent, slimy piece of shit to everybody. But that that's either, that's neither here nor there. And he came back. He fought nobodies for a while. Got in there with with Wilder, the hardest puncher, dangerous heavyweight, all this. Went to a draw. Should have won, but didn't. Then he dominated him in the rematch. And in 2020, or 2021, sorry, he released a video on, on Instagram or wherever on social media saying that he'd reached an agreement to fight Anthony Joshua out in Saudi Arabia for the undisputed heavyweight title. Oh, and then mysteriously the next day, oh no, um, a lawyer, you know, Wilder's lawyers have uh, been to court and said that he has to fight Wilder for a third time. Isn't that convenient the very next day? After he'd said he was going to fight Joshua out in Saudi Arabia. Then um, he beat Wilder again. Then he beat Dillian White, who, let's face it, by that point was a shell of himself. But he was mandatory for a long time. But he was a shell of himself. Um, shouldn't have really been in there, I don't think. He'd only a year or two before been knocked out by... Uh, Alexander Vivekin, quite nastily. So, and then he went in there with little Derek Chisora, who is a worn-out journeyman, especially by that point. And Fury had beaten him twice before, so it was a pointless fight. They pulled the ball over everyone's eyes. No one else was available, which we all know was bullshit. There could have been plenty of people there to fight him. Doesn't matter if they were known or not. Anybody would have been better than fucking Chisora, in my opinion. And the Chisora did nothing for 10 rounds except getting his punch, face punched in. And then Fury retired. And then he unretired. He made a bet with uh, Piers Morgan for, what was it, a million quid or something that he'd never, you'd never see him in a ring again. He fucking lied. He started challenging um, Anthony Joshua after Anthony Joshua had just come off a big fucking back to back losses to Usyk and had a fucking mental breakdown and needed time away and was in no mental shape to be in the fucking ring and then started making ridiculous uh, uh, deadlines and shit like that because he didn't really want the fight he was just talking out of his fucking asshole because he's a lying piece of shit and always has been let's not forget that and then tried to make they tried to make the fight with Usyk he danced around it he made things difficult he didn't want the fight last uh, the year before we all know this You know, I'm sure there's a few few, far, few Fury fanboys out there wanking themselves raw, raw over him. Hey, that's fine. You, you, can, you believe what you want. You agree with me if you want. You don't agree with me. I don't care. You know, you're, we're all entitled to an opinion. I always say this. This is my opinions. This is what I observe. So then he takes the big bag of cash from the Saudis to fight Francis Ngannou, who is an MMA guy and has never boxed before. Not to any kind of professional standard and uh, everybody including myself thought it'd be easy money an easy win I wasn't interested in the fight and he nearly got fucking turned over by the bloke he got put on his ass and walked away with a split decision and there are still lots of people that think he didn't deserve the win 
I, I thought he just did enough to win. But the split, yeah, it was a split decision. It was, it didn't look good. Then the, uh, they announced he was going to fight. Obviously, he was going to fight um, Usyk on February the seventeenth. And I thought this fight ain't happening. And I've been saying it all along. I hoped it would happen. I hoped it would happen. I wanted it to happen. We need it to happen. Boxing needs it to happen so we can fucking move on. And then two weeks out, uh, yeah, the day after, I think it was the day or two days after they announced that it's going to be available in this country, it's going to be available on Sky Box Office and TNT Box Office and DAZN Box Office or Pay Per View, whatever you want to call it. And they announced the price for it. And then the next day, or a day and a half later, oh, he can't fight, fights off, he's cut himself. Could be coincidence, could be bad luck. I don't think so. And plus, all this week, we've been having stories of Fury getting bashed up in sparring by his sparring partners, and he's not been looking good, and he's been looking like shit. And Johnny Nelson, I think he said it on Monday or Tuesday, he said on, um, oh, he's heard all these, he's got all these sources coming out that Fury's not looking good in training, and blah, 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 blah. And then he gets hurt, and he can't fight, he can't, he can't fight, fights off. I said then, as soon as Johnny Nelson started saying that, maybe Johnny Nelson's not the most reliable of people, I'm not saying I believe everything the guy says, but I've heard lots of things in recent weeks that he's not looking good, and the sparring partners are fucking him up a little bit. A lot of people made a lot out of Jai Opatia leaving camp and going back to Australia. Um, no, I, I don't. I don't know. I, I don't think he wanted the fight. I think it's, it's unfortunate what's happened. Uh, I think the gen I think it's a genuine injury. It's a genuine cut. I just don't think Tyson Fury has it anymore. I don't. He likes money more than the glory. We know this. Um, it's, it's pretty obvious. Um, fair play. If he just came out and said, "I'm only in it for the fucking money," like George Foreman did on his comeback when he won the title in '94, he said, "I won't be fighting Lennox Lewis. I won't be fighting Mike Tyson." I won't be fighting so and so because those guys will fucking kill me and they're hard. He at least he was honest. It wasn't okay. You laugh and say, "Well, what are you doing as heavyweight champion then?" But he was honest, and I wish Tyson Fury would just say, "Look, I'm in this for money, and I want easy fights." Okay, you laugh at the guy and say he's a dick, but at least he's an honest dick. And this is the trouble. The reason I'm reacting like this, and lots of other people are reacting this, because this is Tyson Fury 101. He's unreliable. He's a, he's become unreliable. So is his cousin Huey. No one gives a fuck about Huey Fury anymore. People forget he exists because he pulls out of fights all the time. The fucking bloke never fights. So people don't care. People don't talk about him. So people don't think about him anymore. And this is what's happening with Fury. I have not seen one person online or people I know who was shocked that this fight's been pulled. Every single one of us has kind of gone, well, ah, surprise, surprise. Yeah, knew it would happen. What does that tell you? It tells you the public has no faith in the guy. I certainly haven't, and plenty of people haven't. Yeah, there's the few hardcore Fury fans who, like I say, are wanking themselves fucking raw as we speak, over and crying because people don't like their hero. And he still sits there and tells everybody he's the greatest greatest heavyweight champion of all time he hasn't accomplished a fucking fraction of what people like Ali Lennox Lewis Frazier anybody he hasn't accomplished half a fraction of these guys what the Joe Lewis Jack Johnson anybody you go back in history he's not accomplished a fraction of what the likes of them have done before him and it just makes you fucking sick it makes me sick and even if they do reschedule it I'm dubious about whether the fight will ever happen I said this, I've been saying it all along. I hope it does, but I don't think it will. Even if it does get rescheduled, people are just going to go, all oh, right, until he pulls out. I'm not fucking interested. It's sad, but that's where we are. Anyway, these are all just my fo just my thoughts, folks. You don't agree with me, that's fine. If you do agree with me, that's fine. I don't, I don't really care. This is just my opinion. Right, got the Dan Aziz fight. Joshua Boazzi fight tonight. There's something to watch. Uh, the undercard looks a bit shitty. I'm looking forward to that one anyway. So take care, folks. Speak to you soon. Hope you have a good weekend. I'll speak to you soon.